More you talk now. Hey, it's Steve, and I am hanging out with a new friend at Hollywood Burger on Hollywood Boulevard. Jamil Hooper is with me. He is so funny. Like, I'm laughing like like a crazy guy. So, Jamil, welcome to Utah. Hollywood! <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for having me, Steve. I mean, how did you get to be a funny guy? Um, wow. Um, life. <laughs> Just life in general. Like, like, listen, man. There's a lot of things to be sad about. And we can either be sad about them or we can flip it and be happy about them or, or make oh, fun of them. Sure. Because, you know, drama itself is laugh now, cry later. Yeah. Cry now, yeah. laugh later. later. <laughs> a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There's so much drama. There's so much, you know, there's just a, there's a lot of meanness in our culture. You know, yeah, people are so mean anymore. But to laugh, I think laughing is huge. Yes. I think, I think there's a balance. Okay. I think that we have to have both. Like, we have to have those moments because when we're serious about something, because that taps into our compassion, right? Sure. And then when we laugh about something, because that says that that's the healing side. So the moment we see something that's tragic and we go, oh, my God, that's, that's sad. And then, then we think about it. We sit and, and, and we let it soak, you know, like yeah. wash over. Then yeah. it's like, I lived through that. Thank God I lived through that. Now let's laugh about it. <laughs> 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 because, because I could have easily been crazy. I could, like, there's so many things that happened to me throughout my life that, could have made me an insane person today, but I'm not because I always had this positive, optimistic outlook on, on, on where I could go. It didn't break me, so it made me stronger. It made you stronger. Hey, the question that, that I, I'm sitting here, I mean, I've got so many questions I'd like to ask you, but one of them, I mean, how did you get started in doing stand-up, right? Mm-hmm. So a friend of mine, he kind of called me out. He's like, you're not funny. I was like, <laughs> what? No one's ever said that to me before. Whoa. And so it was interesting for him to say that. So what, I, what happened was I challenged him. I was like, if I'm not funny, let's get on stage next week. Whoa. I was like, uh, Just like that. Yeah, let's get on stage. We'll see who's funny. And through that challenge, like, it awakened my comedic side, my stand-up side that I had been laying dormant for years. Interesting. And uh, I put it aside in life because here's his a little arrogant side of me like when I was a kid. <laughs> I thought making people laugh came was so easy. Yeah. That I was like, I'll do that. I, I don't need to do that. Like, I want to work on other things in my life, in, in my world. And so I didn't do, I didn't practice stand up. Huh. So I, once I challenged him and we did that, it really opened me up to like, oh my God, this is fun. Oh my God, like, I like the work of it. I also like, like, I like writing something or coming up with a bit and then putting it on stage to, and, and bringing it to life, bringing it to life. So that's. That's how I got started. That's, That's how wild. I really got started that, doing stand-up. I mean, it, it, the challenge thing, you know, and, and I can see myself, I respond to challenges, you know, I mean, it's like, I'm a big guy, it's like, okay, okay, bring it on, I'm going to, you know, and, and sometimes the challenge has a surprise for us, like you. Now, you said talking about bits, so I'm assuming you're do, you do improv as well as bits. I mean, I saw you do, what I just saw you do earlier today is more stand-up, is that right? Yes. Okay. I mean, it was hilarious. Just, yes. Uh, it was a scream. But I do a lot of act-outs. Okay. With, What's an like, act-out? Like, like, I'm, uh, act-out is when... You set up a joke, and then you play it out. Like you do, you do like a scene. You do like a bit of it. Oh, cool! Uh, so I'm very physical with my stand-up comedy sometimes. Like, so I act it out while I'm telling you the joke. You know, I talk with my hands. I talk with my ex- expression. Like some comedians are very good with just sitting on a stool and telling their jokes. But and you're very physical. I'm physical. I notice you talk a lot with your hands, so you must be part Italian because I'm Italian. I'm always talking with my hands. Everybody's always giving me a bad time. Russo, you're about but no, seriously, you're you're a physical comedian. Yes. Which is different. Yes. I, I I think I got the okay to be that from Jerry Lewis. Ah. When I was a kid, watching Jerry Lewis movies mm-hmm. and and uh, and Don Knotts. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you know Three's Company, like you know Don Knotts, anytime you want, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, with his big eyes and everything, and. and uh, and then once I like really started looking into stand-up comedy, I would watch other comics who would do it, yeah. who would be physical with their comedy, and, and kind of go, oh, so it's okay to be, to move around, to use your body to sell sure. a joke. Like, sure. And, uh, it draws you in. Yeah, and it makes me more comfortable. It yeah. just really makes me yeah. more comfortable on stage to do that. So what's your goal on stage? Do you have a, a, like an objective in mind that you're trying to accomplish? I do. I like to give people a, a perspective on things they probably never thought about. Okay. That are very human experiences, mm-hmm. but they probably never thought about. It. Like I mentioned being from the hood, but I'm not hood. I have to tell people that I'm from the hood. <laughs> so, like, like no, I've they, not heard that before. I like telling them, but I'm not really hood. Yeah, because okay. they don't see it. 
but I'm but I'm hood certified, Steve. Like I'm, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, like food stamps, you know, Section Eight, the whole the whole thing, uh, and 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 being a nerd in the hood. Oh, like you couldn't be a nerd in the hood. Like you have to learn. You couldn't embrace it, anyways. Like <laughs> like you have to be at home. You know, you, you remember the Encyclopedia Britannica? Yes. Remember, the, like you could get them for super cheap. Oh yeah. Like like you get you send a dollar and they send you like the first. 17 Thir- 13 or whatever whatever, yeah. or whatever right um, My mom got those I used to sit up And read them oh. <laughs> Seriously <laughs> Seriously You know what I, I think you're the first one I've ever met That would read them I, I, mean, I, I would open I would open Because it was like these, Oh my god They smell good <laughs> Like they, these brand new books <laughs> Encyclopedias at my house Like Because I'm the person I ever saw encyclopedias At the library at school Or something <laughs> right Yeah so I had these brand new, and so I would thumb through them and go, "Oh, that's interesting." And I would just find out ran, the most random things about things. So, so I was a nerd in the hood, but I couldn't go outside and say, "Hey, so I was reading an encyclopedia today." <laughs> no, like then that's an immediate beatdown. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't live that life. So, like, I would play sports and everything, and and just find my way to show that I was smart or intelligent, sure, and in, in time to be able to survive. And, and 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 so being a hood, you like so so to your question to give people that perspective. A lot of people don't think about nerds being in the hood. No, <laughs> we're, we're there. <laughs> you know, one thing that we try to do is encourage people to change the world, and it sounds to me like you're changing the world with laughter. Yes, yes, because I changed myself with laughter. Oh, like oh, good, like good like, like, for, like like first and foremost, I changed myself with poetry. Like I, I do. Spoken word poetry also. Oh, okay. That's how Shell and I know each other. I do spoken word poetry, and that really helped me give me some peace in life, right? Yes. And so, and, and so I was changing my perspective or changing my anger, yeah. like my inner anger. I was like, I was addressing it with my pen. And then I would, oh, get, I, would get, I would get on stage, and then I would, like even in poetry, I was a physical poet. Like I would do huh. my poems, and I, my body would be moving like this. And You're this, just a this, physical this, dude. This. Yes, I, I'm little, and I have, but I have a lot of energy in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that energy is like trying to say, hey, hey, it, like I'm bigger than my size. You are. You're bigger than life, really. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and, and I hope so. In a lot of ways. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm growing, and and that's just it. Like I want to change the world. Like I want, I want at least, I want to at least, at the very least, infect the world with a, a level of optimism and and, and new perspective. So that we could all find that level of peace that we yeah. want. We need it. We need, we need it. it. We really do. Jamil, thanks for taking time to be on New Talk. we got to get you back on. we got to hang out some more. And you mentioned Shell, just in case somebody's wondering. Our, our buddy Shell Bailey mm-hmm. is hosting this today, this event at, at uh, Hollywood Burger. He's an actor. He's an athlete. He's a great guy. Good friend. And I'm glad he connected us. Yes, I, so am I. If okay. somebody wants to get a hold of you, uh, okay. follow you on social, I mean, how do we do that? You can follow me at, uh, just go to Instagram, uh, Jamil. Jamel's G I M E L S underscore media. Jamel's media on Instagram. Thanks yes. for taking time today. No worries. Thank you for having me. This is Utah Radio. 